Good morning, everyone. Woohoo! We are back in the van for a few days. And some other exciting news. We are going to be working with Amaze again on another sponsored video. We'll tell you more about that later. But we had to get some stuff done to get situated in the van to get our van legs back. In case you don't know, we're driving down to Ushuaia, Tierra del Fuego, the southernmost tip of the Americas. We're headed down that way. And it's actually a long drive. So our first couple days back in the van were some long drives and G was letting us know about it. So we wanted to get to a place where we could get situated and just kind of relax, get things where we need them in the van. And that's where we are right now. Turns out this is a giant campsite. We're headed out today, I gotta go up. We have a super tall van as you guys know. We don't fit in the main entrance, I gotta go up. And we gotta get out of here, get on the road and head south. We got a special place we're going to. I think we've already told you there's several neat spots along the way. Let's go guys, let's go have some fun. couple quick notes before we leave this campground I wanted to tell you number one that camping is very very popular in Argentina there are lots of camp spots campsites some official some not this one happens to be pretty giant they've got ball courts as you can see here a little soccer field with basketballs they've got big grills and uh, bathrooms and showers and all that type of stuff but it is summertime or spring spring going on summertime here as we head south we can expect it to get cooler last night it got cold yesterday it rained most of the day and so you'll see some people with some jackets on and things like that but as we head south expect that it's going to get colder and colder the second thing is what if I told you, you could have a chance to travel with your own tiny home on wheels, just like us, exploring the world and creating your very own adventures in your very own van? Well, guess what? We're excited to be working with Omaze because they launched with a mission to transform typical charitable giving by giving people a chance to dream big and to win once in a lifetime prizes all while helping nonprofits make the world a better place. For example, in 2021, Omaze gave over 27 million to 131 non-for-profit organizations. And guess what? In 2021, there was also 6,462 Omaze winners. And that's why we're excited about being part of this experience. And here's what's cool you can enter your chance to win a custom converted Mercedes Sprinter van. Score the ultimate off-road van, a Mercedes Sprinter with over 85,000 in customizations, including Van Smith's green package. This thing has a full modern kitchen, tons of storage, a comfortable full-size bed, and loads more. And don't forget, your donations are making an impact for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. <laughs> now St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital is leading the way the world understands, treats, and defeats childhood cancer and other life-threatening diseases. Its purpose is clear, finding cures and saving children. What are you waiting for? Join us on the road, live in the van life travel dream, and your ultimate home on wheels. Right now, head on to omaze.com slash snow and Kurt and enter right now. The experience closes on January 27th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So this is your last chance. And I promise, this is the one you don't want to miss. You'll find the link in the description. And now, back to our van and on to another adventure. You ready to go? Let's roll. 
There's Nanner. She's ready. She's not on the dash, but she's ready to go. We're on the road. I know Kurt just told you about our campsite, but I don't know if he told you it was literally right on the coast, right on the beach. But we couldn't get to it. Uh, there was a fence and a tree line and all of that. We could hear the waves. But this morning as we're leaving, we're getting our first real glimpse of the Atlantic Ocean since Cartagena, since, all the way in Colombia. Since our very first time stepping foot on South America. So, uh, it's pretty. <laughs> we're not stopping here. We gotta get southbound, but don't worry. We'll be seeing more of that pretty Atlantic Ocean. A fact about Argentina. There it is a lot of farmland, a lot of agriculture going on here. And similar to Brazil, there's huge cattle country here. Now the cows they raise here are different. Don't quiz me on the type, but they're definitely different color. I think the ones in Brazil were more heat tolerant. In any event, we are in cattle country and also there's a lot of big fields and we have come through some really cool sunflower fields and obviously those are always nice to look at and I should say that this area is very very flat and we're near the coast and so it's very windy as well and so there's also some wind farms through here and really it's just kind of wide open countryside with a lots of grass we see lots of birds of prey and we're headed south oh okay okay so uh seven no seven up not uh see ks Sugar. Reduce sugar. And of course, we <laughs> stop in and the game is player. on television. <laughs> the game is still on. <laughs> Ended up with the carne and the ensalada. And Snow got the chicken, the grilled chicken and salad. So, Smells yummy lunch. Yummy. Looks yummy. Let's do it. We just found a really tasty roadside restaurant. Uh, grilled chicken and grilled beef with a really nice fresh salad. Kurt had a few french fries. Tasty guys, tasty. But we've still got a long drive, so it's time to get back on the road. to our little camp spot for the night. This is Agua Termas, meaning it's a hot, hot spring or a spa right behind the hotel. I just had a look, I'll have to show you. This is a little bit different place than we're used to. But of course, you know, the first thing we gotta do is get the monster out and get him for a walk. He's been really good today. So I ain't complaining about nothing. Plus, he's my buddy. No. We can go up there with the trees. Nana will probably follow. She's a little goat. She knows about paths. 
And of course, Vanna needs a walk too. She can't be left alone. They were both super good today on the super long drive. Hey, buddy. What's that? Esa un gato. It's a uh, bengala. Un gato bengala. Sí. Un tigre. Similar. <laughs> Gracias. Where we go? <laughs> this boy is a superstar. <laughs> All right, the cats are walked. It's time to go enjoy this spa. Now, we have chased hot springs all over the U.S., Mexico, Central America, South America. A lot of good times and a lot of different types of hot springs anywhere from wild in the nature to 100% man built but this one is like none other that I've been in and so what you'll notice about this is the water is like really rusty colored and very thick like it's covered with sediment and so it looks like you kind of got a still pool that has some more minerals and then several others but we're gonna start with a mud bath so let's go do that there's kind of a walkway out here and I think these are some hot springs out sort of in the lake area with no cover on them we'll be on the lookout for these guys it looks like there's kind of look like jackrabbits here and spoiler alert Look at those parrots. <laughs> Spoiler alert, look at those parrots. But it's a nice little walk out here. It looks like this is sort of some kind of hot springs that comes up from deep into the ground. I haven't found the source yet. And here's some lagoons, probably overflow from that. But they do have a nice nature walk away from the main pools. Uh, we saw some rias on the way in. We did not get the pictures of the rias, but we definitely saw some. And look, they also have some jobbly, hobbly, some wild boars as well out here. And right out here we have it. Open air hot springs, open air termales, termas. So look at this. I lived the experience and I just got to tell you it was not my favorite so first off you start off and you get in this pool right here and the water's warm it's not hot it's a little bit maybe like bath water warm you see those mud buckets the bottom is mud you grab the mud and you spread that all over your body and then you sit in one of those chairs and bake and let it dry. Now, I find that found that whole process a little bit, yeah, I don't know if gross is the word or whatever. I just felt uncomfortable. And I couldn't sit in the sun long enough to endure the full drying process, but I was really mudded up. Now, the next move is to come right in this little area and this is like the shower area, the vapor area. And so you come in here and you can see the muddy red water running off of there and there. And so you can really just get a good hydro massage from this water and get clean. And to be honest with you, that felt pretty good. This is a little warmer than the other area. However, if you guys can see the water's just kind of splashing all around, it's hitting you and some got to my mouth and it was super salty and gross. So I wiped my face to get it out and that's when I realized that the salty water also is really stingy. So it's stinging in my eyes, so I'm spitting and 
<laughs> stumbling out of the pool and I get over to my towel and wipe my face and take a big breath of air. But being the trooper that I am, being the trooper that I am, I put my stuff away and said, let's give it one more try. And then I got out here into the open air pools. Now, as I said, this water has a ton of salt in it. And so I was very buoyant. And usually I'm not, I sink to the bottom. Snow floats, I sink. But in this, I was able to sink kind of like I would imagine the Mediterranean Ocean. So that was very cool. The warm water was relaxing, but for sort of the other shenanigans. But at the end of the day, my shorts went from white to like this muddy brown. And I, whatever it is in the water, whether it's iron, salts, and other stuff, you could just see it kind of like getting on your skin and it was even hard to like wash off. <laughs> so they had a nice clean shower area. And so I went over there and took a nice warm shower, scrubbed, tried to clean my, my swim trunks out, which are now dyed another color. <laughs> and anyway, I got out, I scrubbed. I think I'm actually pretty clean. I think all the water came off. I could smell iron in the shower. The shower was not salty. So I feel better about that. Oh, and there's a giant rat. If you guys saw that scamper across there. But now we're headed back to the hotel, back to the van to see Snow and the kitties. Good morning from a camp spot behind a hotel at a hot springs somewhere in Argentina. I gotta tell you guys, it took uh, three days but I believe that all four of us are 100% adjusted back to van life. The kitties have been getting nice walks. We had a good night's sleep. Yesterday was a long day. We were wore out, but I think we're good to go. And now that we're all van life acclimated, today's adventure takes us to somewhere cool, not just a campsite. But we're gonna go see something that you can only see in this place. We got about a two hour drive and uh, I think we'll probably have a wild camp spot. Our first time not paying for camping and being in a remote location. And I am super excited about it. And a spoiler alert, it's also right on the coast. So let's get ready to hit the road and go on our first real exploring adventure. So Kurt is up from his little cat nap that he snuck back to the back of the van to take while I was walking Vanna. But he's up, the van is ready to roll, and we are leaving the campsite. But we have spotted giant jackrabbits, which I think we might have got a little catch of on the camera. We'll have to see. But also, tiny baby owls right here on the fence line as we're leaving. Nothing like a little wildlife to start the day. Good morning everyone. Well, we're on the road again and for once since we've been back in the van, we only have a short drive. We have about a two hour drive today. We've been driving our tails off a long way down to Ushuaia in Patagonia but we spot a little wildlife this morning which was nice and we keep coming through these like weird checkpoints where they're like do you have any fruit or are you transferring any fruit or meat now we've said no because I kind of think it's if you're transporting it for sale or delivery and we just have a very small amount that's for personal use but we don't really know the law or the rule or why they're doing those checkpoints. But we have food with us, so I don't know. Anyway, we're moving down the road. We got a special spot today. Today actually is our destination that we've been trying to get to. Our first real adventure. One along the way. So this is going to be exciting, guys. Let's go. So this is definitely olive oil country. And we just went through an olive oil field trees for miles. Lots of olives. We 
have crossed into an area that you guys might recognize. It's called Patagonia. Now, we are traveling down the east coast and this is the Pampas region. So it's not Patagonia as you're thinking about with the Andes Mountains and the beautiful scenery. This is flat land and it is where all the agriculture or a lot of the agriculture takes place in Argentina. So we're driving along and we've been seeing a lot of reyes, which if you don't know what reyes are, they're similar to an ostrich. They're a little bit smaller. They're found here in South America. What we learned in North America, and oh, by the way, we just saw some babies running along. And what Snow taught us when we were coming through Brazil and we saw all those reyes was that the male is the one who raises all the babies. And so there was one big rea, which would have been a male, run along with several different babies. Pretty cool. Sorry, the shot's probably a little bouncy, but I hope you enjoy. All right, this is the Rio Negro. And I think this is a very important river here in Argentina. And I actually believe this comes as a glacier melt river from all the way across the country over from the Andes River. Or Andes Mountains, sorry. So, very important river that travels across the country and provides a lot of water for the farmland. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers guys!